Broadcasting live from the Business Radio X studios in South Florida, it's time for South Florida Business Radio. Now, here's your host. Lee Cantor here, another episode of South Florida Business Radio, and this is going to be a good one. But before we get started, it's important to recognize our sponsor, Diaz Trade Law, your customs expert. Today on South Florida Business Radio is Stanley Ragu, and he is with the Miami-Dade Beacon Council. Welcome, Stanley. Hey, Lee. How are you? I am doing well. I'm so excited to be talking to you. For those who aren't familiar, can you share a little bit about the Beacon Council? How are you serving folks? Yeah, sure. Well, the Beacon Council is Miami-Dade County's official economic development uh, organization or partnership. We're we're public-private partnership. We're governed by uh, and led by a volunteer group of board of directors who are both business and government leaders in the community. A subset of the board makes up our executive committee. And they are delegated with decision-making authority for the board annually. I, I guess you could say, too, that the organization helps to market the county as a world business class destination. So our job is to attract and retain companies that invest in and create high-value jobs uh, in this community, um, driving long-term uh, economic prosperity and uh, inclusive growth. Now, what was the genesis of the, the idea? How did this come about? Yeah, so the organization was founded in 1985, uh, and um, the focus of this organization was to focus on Miami-Dade County, which is one of 67 counties in the state of Florida. Um, Interestingly enough, people tend to think that Enterprise Florida, which is the state agency that does economic development for the state, preceded Beacon Council, but Beacon Council was was actually the model that um, Enterprise used to create Enterprise Florida. So we've really been sort of ingrained in this community for the longest. We are, we've been recognized as one of only 62 economic development organizations in, in, the, in the country that is designated by the International Economic Development Council as an accredited economic development organization. Um, and all that mumbo jumbo means is that we are um, audited on a regular basis on the work that we do here. Now, what is kind of a day in the life for someone at the Miami-Dade Beacon Council? Yeah, every day is different <laughs> um, because of the number of companies that we're, we're assisting, the, the different industry sectors that the team here um, focuses on. I, I personally, I'm, I'm responsible for the Trade Logistics Committee uh, and, and the, well, the Trade Logistics Industry Sector. We focus on six targeted industry sectors outside of uh, hospitality and tourism, which we typically see to the Greater Miami Convention Visitors Bureau. But the six targeted industry sectors are uh, aviation, uh, financial services, creative design, which we now call creative industries, innovation technology, life sciences and healthcare, and trade and logistics. So those are our our six targeted industry sectors. And you can imagine for each of these uh, industry sectors, they're there are just a, a host of subsectors in those. So no day is the same. Now, is your work trying to attract uh, businesses from around the world to uh, headquarter or have a presence in Miami-Dade? Or is it to help businesses within Miami-Dade help kind of grow their businesses, you know, within Miami-Dade and the world? Does it yeah, work both ways or is it are you doing one more than the other? Yeah, no, definitely it's, it's our focus is on foreign direct investments to Miami. You know, when it comes to, uh, especially on the trade logistics side, when it comes to exports or, um, you know, work with some of the delegation or some, some of the trade offices, we, we partner with the International Trade Consortium at, at Miami Dade County, but definitely defer to them as the lead. Our focus is in bringing foreign direct investments to Miami and helping other companies within the United States that understand the value that Miami brings to this community, particularly as we are the gateway to the, to Latin America and the Caribbean um, as uh, an opportunity for them to have a regional headquarter here uh, in, um, in South Florida or Miami in particular. So what's kind of your elevator pitch to them? Yeah. I mean, my, we, you know, I mean, <laughs> the data shows us is the, the, the I guess the, the, the easiest elevator pitch is that we market Miami as a world business class destination. We help local companies grow. And the work that we do is really um, focused on helping to shape the direction of our economy. 
And then um, has it been working? Like you've been around since 85. I imagine it's worked pretty well. But can you share some of the stats to, um, you know, for our listeners to understand the impact that you're all making? Absolutely. (laughs) Um, Well, for for one thing, uh, as you said, we've been around for, uh, I want to say, 37 years now, if if, if I'm not mistaken, Uh, since, since 1985. Um, since then, we have assisted um, over, uh, I want to say, a thousand companies. Uh, there's, I think, close to seven billion dollars in capital investment. Um, I should have had some of these numbers. Um, yeah, but it's billions of dollars that are being generated through the efforts. I mean, not solely through your efforts, but the impact that you're making is real on the and and the, I would imagine in all the sectors that you're focusing in on those are all growing as well. Yes, they are. Um, We have, you know, I think we've seen continuous growth even throughout the pandemic, um, both in in the financial services and the tech um, industry. Uh, The cargo industry has been just exploding since even before the pandemic, but even throughout the pandemic and since the pandemic, um, the the numbers have, have really not not stop to grow and um and it's 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 interesting because you would think especially since we're in this sort of an inflation mode that uh we would have seen a dip in some of the numbers and and i think maybe this week or uh within this month we're starting to see a slight decline but nothing that suggests that we're you know there's there's a there's a a recession around the corner now, um, how has the uh, ability to help the people who do uh, kind of move into the Miami-Dade area, how, uh, finding talent, are you having a challenge there uh, or do you have a good pipeline for them to have the, the right folks in place to help them? Yeah, you, you, you cut out just a little bit, Lee. Can you repeat that last Sure. Um, can you talk about uh, how you help the people who, when they do relocate to Miami to help them find the, the talent that they need to be successful. Yes, absolutely. So um, we've got a a, a team of of experts here that uh, are very familiar with the trends of our industry sectors and some of the sort of key services that we offer here. um, You know, they, they vary between some of the finance financing programs that we have here as you mentioned, we, we assist with um, uh, recruitment and training uh, in collaboration with some of our partners like Career Source South Florida. Uh, we're uh, very adept at helping uh, to expedite the permitting um, uh, uh, process or, or anything with permitting and regulatory um, issues. We certainly partner with our real estate community in helping with site selection. Um, some companies that are relocating here if they need uh, employee assistance relocation, we have a program for that as well. Um, and I think the, the biggest value that we bring is our customized research. So we can create customized reports to include, you know, demographic profiles of Miami-Dade County, whichever municipality that they might be interested in, um, outlining the different firms by industry uh, that's, that's here, any employment um, by industry, uh, the percentage of distribution of employment. So there's some really good data points that can help uh, a company in making that final decision about coming to Miami. And it sounds like that the the business environment is very collaborative where you have these public-private partnerships uh, that can really accelerate a company's um, ability to be successful faster. Yes, and I think Aside from the research piece, I think the other um, sort of biggest value that the Beacon Council brings because of our uh, uh, how long we've been around is the relationships that we have uh, uh, forged over the last 35 years, both in the private and public sector. So when a company comes here and the, whether or not they're part of a cluster, because we've had these you know really um, uh, deep relationships with private companies, the, the, the public sector as well, that allows them to really um, uh, get to know the community, get to know the industry um, in as part of the Miami-Dade area and how they can begin to move the, the, the um, company's uh, growth and progress a lot sooner than they, than, than they could have without the Beacon Council. 
Now, is there a story you can share, maybe a success story? You don't have to name the name of the company, but maybe explain the challenge that they were facing uh, when they found the Miami-Dade Beacon Council and how you were help, uh, help them get to maybe a new level once they kind of got plugged in with you and your team. Yeah, it's it's interesting. We I, I, I get this all the time um, when I when I meet someone that either you know found out about us uh, three months later or six months later or even a year later. They go, "Gosh, had I known about you guys, that you got you you know you would have saved us so much time and effort." Um, so that's 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 really a common theme, um, and I think part of it is really because we you know we're we're very familiar with uh, the industry sector. We know all the players here. Um, and the the committees have really helped uh, for each of our targeted industry sectors. We have a, a committee um, that comes together quarterly, in some cases monthly, to talk about um, all of the sort of impending um, issues that uh, an industry could face in terms of potential impediments, but also opportunities for growth. So all of our industry uh, sectors has a is tied to a committee. And uh, each of these committees, they serve as a as a platform for not just for industry intelligence, but also for communication of industry knowledge. And, um, and as a result of that, when a company comes here and we start to make those introductions, it really helps to expedite um, how quickly they uh, establish themselves here in, in Miami. So, I mean, I, I, it, it's hard to kind of pick one because we, we, we get this on a regular basis, but you can tell when we meet with the company um, they are just elated that they that there's an organization that's here that's that's able to kind of um, help them uh, sort of you know um, leapfrog uh, uh, a few months rather than ha- them having to do this by themselves. And the other sort of major point of uh, that I want to make sure that I, I bring up is that we operate under confidentiality, and and you know in in because of the sunshine laws here in Florida, when you uh, when you're dealing with either a municipality or with the, with the county itself, um, you know, any kind of exchange of information is subject to um, to public record. And in the case of the Beacon Council, because we operate under confidentiality, uh, it really does allow private sector companies to come in and 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 do business in a way that they know that uh, nothing will be shared until they're until they're ready to to share that information, whether it's through a press release or uh, however they might choose to do that. Now, what are the size of the companies that are, are kind of coming to you at the Beacon Council and coming to Miami-Dade? Are they um, kind of of all sizes? Are startups kind of um, knocking on the door? Are these enterprise-level companies maybe in another country that are looking to, you know, get into America and, and use Miami-Dade as the launching point? Like, what is the, you know, typical size of the company that is coming in? Yeah, no, that, that, that's exactly right. It's a great question. It's, it really runs the spectrum. Um, I think uh, other, other than maybe perhaps before the, the or during the, this, this pandemic period, we really focused on um, uh, small to mid-sized companies all the way up to your large multinational corporations. But during the pandemic, uh, we've um, begun to work with some of the micro businesses. And that's really had to do with, um, especially in the hospitality area, where uh, a lot of uh, the businesses that were struggling the most were some of those micro businesses. But traditionally, it's been, uh, you know, small businesses of, you know, $2 million, $3 million in, in revenue to, you know, your, your, your biggest companies that are out there. So it's not unusual, for example, for me to be working with uh, a Maersk or a CMACGM on the shipping side or a Rider or FedEx, um, but also uh, a, a very sort of local Miami company. So it, it runs the gamut. So what's your backstory? How did you get involved in this line of work? It sounds exciting and re- very rewarding. Yeah, I, Lee, it truly is. Um, and I think the best part is just, meeting people in every walk of life. Um, so my background, I, I actually, uh, I, I worked for FedEx for 25 years. Um, so I know a little, little bit about logistics. And, uh, and at the time, they were looking for somebody who had some background in, in, in the trade logistics sector. And, um, and, I, and I got hired at the Beacon Council. I've been here for just under eight years. 
and um, have really just developed some great relationships, particularly at the at the airport and seaport, which are two of the you know key intermodals for moving cargo. But you know we've got some just tremendous assets here when you when you think about both the seaport and the airport. Um, you know whether it's on the seaport side, whether it's the cruise side or the cargo side, just um, uh, truly an economic engine. Uh, same thing goes for 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 our, our airport here at Miami International Airport, both on the passenger side and cargo. Just some serious assets that we have here. I think for for my for this industry sector in trade and logistics, we've really done a phenomenal job in in investing in this community, investing in our seaports and our in our airport. And as a result of that, um, a, tons of companies have benefited from from that investment. So it, it's 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 every day is fun. Every day you meet great people. Um, people are excited to to come to Miami. Even the startups. I mean, can't tell you how many uh, logistics companies or or logistics IT companies that are that are here, and they're here because the infrastructure is here and it allows them to grow. So always always exciting. Right. But it's one of those things where you're you're kind of a best kept secret and we're trying to help get the word out to make people know uh, that you exist and that they should be partnering with you and getting to know you because it can accelerate their growth. It can flatten their learning curve. And it's just silly not to. I mean, you're a resource there that's meant to be helpful and available. So uh, I'd like, you know, more and more firms that are coming or thinking about coming to America and Miami-Dade specifically to get a hold of you and learn more about the Beacon Council. Yeah, no, that was, that's well said. <laughs> you know, this is a, a diverse community. We we're we're in a region of, of over 6.2 million people. When you think about uh, South Florida in general, I mean, South Florida is um, uh, these three counties. I often refer to South Florida as the anchor of the state to think that just three counties um, represents almost a third of the entire population just tells you how important we are to the state of Florida. Um, most people know that we are now the third largest state in, in the country. But I think what they don't know is that, you know, we are we have more than 1400 multinational corp- um, corporations that call Miami home. Um, they don't know that uh, we are the fastest em- uh, emerging tech hub in the United States. Um, a lot of people don't know that even Miami leads the nation in tech talent migration. Um, where we have we're, we're creating an um, an ecosystem where everyone is welcome. Uh, the government is actively supporting the growth here, uh, and you know we, we we you can see it in the numbers at the airport at the seaport. Uh, whether it's the cruise industry, the, our, our airlines are, are just seeing just incredible growth. So Miami is a, a unique geographic location where we're internationally trained work, uh, um, uh, uh, workforce with what I, I, I think is a very modern infrastructure that really enables business leaders to, to make Miami uh, a, a, a base of operations. So it, it, it's you know, when people come here, they go, wow, we just thought this was just, you know, great weather, beautiful beaches. Uh, and little did they know that, you know, we are, a, for example, we're, we're the number one cruise port in the world. Um, we've got, we're probably the number one container port uh, um, in the world. I know that we're for international cargo, we're number one in the United States. Um, I think we're, we're, we're number two in U.S. airport for international passengers. And so the list goes on of, of some of our really great rankings. And, um, un, and until and unless you, you reach out to organizations like the Beacon Council, you're just really unaware of some of these uh, great statistics. Right. And it's one of those things where trade and logistics is kind of uh, invisible to the average person. It's not on their radar at- uh, yeah, until something bad happens. And we're here to talk about all the good things that are happening and how important the trade and logistics is to um, not only South Florida, but Florida and the country and the world. You have, you're, you're at a hub and it's important to recognize that. And it's important that organizations like Miami Dade Beacon Council exist to help make business go. I mean, without your help, it would be a lot harder for these companies to integrate themselves in the community and really um, get 
the the level of success that they're able to get with your help. So I think that more and more companies should be reaching out to Miami Dade Beacon Council. And if they are interested in learning more, Stanley, what is the coordinates? What is the best way to get a hold of you or somebody on the team? Is there a website? Is there social media coordinates that people should know about? Yes, absolutely. We are um, very much on social media. So, but the website is Miami Dade Beacon Council or just beaconcouncil.com. Um, you'll, you'll definitely get uh, a, a great overview of, of, uh, of the organization who's here. Um, you, you know, if you go into the search bar, you can just, you know, you put in staff or, you know, when you scroll into the website, you'll, you'll get all the information. Obviously my name is Stanley Rigaud. All of us, it's first initial last name. So in my case, it's S Rigaud at beaconcouncil.com. Um, <clears throat> but, uh, easily, um, reachable through our website. Um, and I think our, our phone number is, I should know this, but I think it's 305-579-1300. Um, my specific line is uh, 305-579-1346. Um, so yes, I'm, we're all on LinkedIn. Uh, we, 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 we post a lot of stuff on, on LinkedIn as well. So um, very easy to find. Well, thank you so much for sharing your story today. You're doing such important work and we appreciate you. Thank you, Lee. I appreciate the, the, the time to come and speak on your show. All right. This is Lee Cantor. We will see you all next time on South Florida Business Radio.